Good afternoon everyone. This is Linda Sue Plants for you and today I am going to be bringing to you the tools of my trade. Um, I've been wanting to do this for a while. Um, I've had a number of people ask me um, you know what types of uh, pest control I use and what kind of water I use and uh, those types of things so I'm going to um, do a, a video of a, an overall uh, watering and, and what have you I'm not going to go into great detail on this one um, if somebody wants to hear more detail regarding anything that I'm talking about today um, comment below and let me know and I will make a separate video for that. Okay, so let's get started. Um, <clears throat> to begin with, you're looking at these little bottles here, spray bottles that I got at the um, at the dollar store and then I just typed up some labels and taped them on with packing tape to keep them waterproof. I have these uh, <clears throat> in separate bottles because they're separate things. This is plain tap water and I use this to spray my plants that like a lot of humidity um, when it's really dry in the winter. I really don't spray in the, in the, during the summer months um, much at all. But that's this one. And then <clears throat> this is the uh, my pesticide. It's one part alcohol nine parts water with a few drops of dish soap to help for the sticking. Um, <clears throat> I use this on um, many different things actually when I have uh, fungus or fungus gnats going on I use it. I also use this for fungus gnats and this one I will use on like my um, calatheas or calatheas, however you choose to pronounce it. Um, the the more tender plants that that really, the ones that I use distilled water on, uh, I will use the um, H2O2, which is hydrogen peroxide for those of you that don't know. Um, and then for the alcohol, I use that on. Um, mealybugs and I've also used it for fungus gnats um, but I try to use it sparingly I don't like to put alcohol on my plants if I don't have to but sometimes I do um, one of the things that happens and I'm just going to touch on this real quickly is <clears throat> I have brought fungus gnats home in soil um, even when I'm really careful with my plants and I used to rule of thumb um, keep them in a plastic bag for at least a week before I would take them out and put them near my other plants but even I've noticed over the years even when I do that it doesn't it doesn't always seem to help so um, and I know I've said this before in other videos I I don't understand what is going on with the fungus gnat thing my husband seems to think that it's because we're bringing a lot of stuff back and forth from overseas and we're, we're losing our natural predators for things. And he may be completely right. Um, but I can tell you, um, I am a great grandma and I have been, had house plants pretty much my whole life. I even had a plant store at one time in my earlier life. Um, and I never even heard of fungus gnats. So, it's kind of frustrating for me, but we're, we got a handle on it. But like I said, once in a great while, I'll, I'll see one or two flying around, and one is too many for me. Um, one of the things that happens is they get in the soil and they lay eggs, and they lay a lot of them. And if those hatch, then you've got an outbreak, and and they're just they're just horrible nuisance. But okay, so <clears throat> the the other thing about that is I um and I. I learned this trick from um, um, Summer Rain Oaks plant one on me 
she introduced this mosquito bits. Um, let me see if make sure you can see this. And this works really good. And it's an all natural, although it does have a kind of a scary warning on it. it it's an all natural product, so I don't understand um, unless they're just trying to be overprotective here. But I literally take and dump a little bit of this out in the palm of my hand and I put it in a gallon of, of plain water. Um, I mix a couple inches of hot water and I shake it up a little bit and then I add the regular room temperature water and I leave my water sit out for a day or two anyways before I use it. Um, <clears throat> and I don't use it every time. I just use it when I'm having a fungus snap problem. And once in a while I'll throw it in there just as a precaution but usually just when I'm seeing a problem. But this stuff works really good. And you can get it at pretty much any big box store. So um, it's it's really, really a good product. It also comes in mosquito dunks, um, these little rings, which I'll show you in a bit. <clears throat> but, okay, enough about fungus gnats. Um, I have plain distilled water, and that is the water that I use on the plants that I water with distilled water because if you spray plants that like distilled water with tap water, you're kind of defeating the purpose. So that's why I have two waters. Okay, so <clears throat> these, this is for watering purposes only. Um, the hydrogen peroxide will help your roots of your plants if you have some that are struggling, depending on what the problem is. And I use this on my dad's peace lily and it helped a lot along with um, a tiny bit of Epsom salt that I only used once and it made a, the world of difference in in my dad's plant. So I keep a separate, I keep this one for that purpose. I keep that separate. And then this is my African Violet um, watering water with food. It's uh, one eighth of a teaspoon um, that I put in this quart of water and that works really good. And this is the one that I use, African Violet. It's a 7-10-7 mixture, and it's made just for African Violets. And I get this at Steins or Lowe's. Pretty much every store carries this, this brand. I don't know if you can see them. And like I said, I just put an eighth of a teaspoon in here, and I keep this water filled and so it stays at room temperature so when I water my plants they're not getting shocked. Okay so that's pretty much it for the watering. Then <clears throat> I have this little caddy that I'm in the process of redoing these right now but I thought I would just show them to you as I'm doing it. Um, I have my microfiber cloth which works really well when you're wanting to clean off your plant leaves. Um, it, it works much better than your normal washcloth. And then <clears throat> I have a few tools in here. This, these are syringes that I get at our science store. It's a kind of a goofy store, and I don't know if they have them in other states, but um, it sells just a little bit of everything, and. Um, they have a lot of medical supplies there, so I'm assuming that's what this once was. I don't know, but um, it, it works really well. I've got a big one and a small one for my African violets because if I, when they get really big and the leaves are hanging over the pot and you don't want to get the leaves wet, um, this works really good because you can get underneath them. I also use this for spot watering on some of my succulents, um, my echeverias. Um, when they take up the whole top of the pot, and I don't want to get water on those either, so I, I end up using these. Um, this is my little tweezers for when I'm working with um, a cactus, so I don't get slivers. And this is my little scooper when I'm repotting, and I have. And most of you know that I love having my hands in the soil, so usually I fill my pots with my hands. Um, but when I have little plants, um, sometimes the way they're in the pot, you can't do that with your hand. you got to use some kind of um, 
tool or spoon or, or shovel or something and this works really good and these I got a whole package of these for a dollar there were like six in a package I got them at the dollar store so really cheap sturdy plastic and they work great and then on this side I have um, some tweezers I have a plastic fork in here for pulling roots down in the event that I need to do that um, that would be like if you have an infestation of some sort and then I have these little things that I also bought at that science store these are really handy to have I'm not sure where you could get them other than that place but they work really good for um, small plants when you want to get dirt or things off um, in between leaves so that's for that and the same thing with these are old makeup brushes um, that I use too for you know getting dirt and things off of small crevices I have an Exacto knife in here. Um, I've only used this once or twice, and I believe it was on my African violets. It's a good tool to have when you're making cuttings, and you want to do an angle on the stem. Then you can you can do that. With, these are very sharp, and it's very easy to do that with. So that's about it in here. And last but not least. Um, these, this, the first caddy that I showed you is one that I will put my waters back in and I take that with me as I walk around the room checking my plants um, so that I have the tools right there with me. I don't have to keep running back and forth. This is more of a storage caddy um, with my plant things. And in here I have my plant labels, which... I'm still working on trying to do and I don't know I just it's time consuming and I you know I just really don't like the way it looks um, so I've been trying to come up with a different um, method of labeling my plants I know um, black butterfly journey with back black butterfly she had some really neat they looked like little chalkboards they were shaped kind of like these but they were like a black, like a chalkboard background with white on the front, and I thought those were so, so cool. And I've been meaning to um, write to her under the comments and ask her where she got those and if she would mind if I copied her because I really like them. They, they, they even, I think, had a, like a wooden frame around them. So they looked more like they belonged with the plant as opposed to these ugly white plastic things. So I think that's why I'm, I still don't have it done. But anyway, and then <clears throat> I've got, of course, my... Um, cotton balls to uh, dip in the um, alcohol when I'm cleaning, um, when I'm doing mealy bugs, or if I'm just trying to clean off, or if I'm taking cuttings and I want to clean off my my cutting tool, whether it's the exacto knife or the um, scissors. So I, I do keep that, and that is going to be going back in my other caddy. Um, I have some extra chains and hooks in this bag. Oh, and here's that package I told you about from the Dollar Tree with those little spoons. Maybe there was four in a pack because there's three left and I got one, so four. Four for a dollar, and they'll probably last forever. And I have a funnel to fill my water, to fill these, <clears throat> and my big jugs if I'm putting something in there because I don't want it to spill all over. So this works really well. And I have rooting powder. I have used this, although honestly I don't really know that it makes a difference. I, I haven't seen a huge difference between when I use it and when I don't. So. Sometimes I use it and sometimes I don't. And then in here, even though it's a cottage cheese container top, because my other top broke, I have been using this fertilizer my whole life. And I used to get it at the grocery store. Now I can't find it anymore. So I did, I looked online 
and apparently it's I believe it's now called John's I'm not sure um, but it was only being sold to wholesalers so I went to my neighborhood garden and um, the garden center it's a farm actually where they sell vegetables and plants and I happen to th know the man that that owns it very well and he was kind enough to sell me some of his um, and I just refilled my pot and it's just the blue um, granules Let's see if you can see that and it goes in the water and it dissolves and I'm pretty sure there are other <coughs> excuse me manufacturers of the same um, fertilizer but I like this the best um, I don't like the pellets the slow release stuff because you never know when it's releasing and when it isn't okay and then I've got a bigger scissors here this is for big cactus my barbecue tongs in case I gotta get a hold of something and it has prickers in it this works really well and then of course I've got my hydrogen peroxide and hopefully you can see here I do have a moisture meter and for those of you that have seen my earlier videos um, you would know that I was trying to desperately to save the plant from my father's wake and I have never used a moisture meter in my life but I was desperate I just didn't know what was going on. I didn't know what was wrong, and, it, and, and I almost lost the plant completely. I did bring it back. Um, but in the meantime, I, I actually went out and purchased this moisture meter because I was desperate, and it gives the, um, the light and the pH and the moisture. It's back in its package because I really don't use it anymore. But for people who have a hard time figuring, figuring out when to water and not water, uh, I would recommend getting one of these. You don't necessarily need this one with the pH meter on it or the light. In fact, I bought one for my daughter and she said it was very confusing. Um, but they do make these, <coughs> in fact, they look just like this. Um, and they're just moisture and it's got dry and moist. So you can't, you really can't mess up. So, um, like I said, for those of you that have a hard time figuring out what is moist and what isn't, these are a good tool to have. Then, <clears throat> and we're getting down to the end. For fungus gnats, I do use these. Um, I haven't had to use many, but they work really well. They come on a, in a little tube. And this is what's inside. Hopefully you can see that. And it pulls apart and it and it comes down and you got a long um, sticky trap. Be very careful because they once they stick to something, it's really difficult to get the glue off. Um, but what does take the glue off if you choose to use these, believe it or not, is baby oil. This is also very good for taking off labels. Um, when you have old labels that are stuck to the original pots, um, the nursery pots, I find if you you know wash them in hot soapy water and then peel off what you can of the label and then when it's dry, take a, a rough wash rag and put some baby oil on and it, what, it takes the glue right off. And it also does that for these. It does it on everything, actually. Anytime you have a really sticky label that you can't get off something, baby oil. Who knew? Um, <clears throat> okay. And then this is another um, sticky trap. It's something that I have used. I, I'm leery about these um, because it seems... It does attract the fungus gnats, and I worry if that plant that I'm putting this in doesn't already have them, that it might end up with them because the fungus gnat goes toward it. And although it does capture them, I'm not sure if I'm doing more harm than good. So I'm, 
not quite sure on these, but if I had a bad breakout, I, I would put them in at least one or two of my plants um, just to get rid of those uh, fungus gnats. So this works good for that. These are short pieces as opposed to the long strip. Okay. And then here is the uh, mosquito dunks that I told you about. And these work really good. These also work really good outside. If you live out in the country like I do and you have a lot of problems with mosquitoes, um, if you have a rain barrel, um, it's good to put it in there. It does not hurt the birds or the wildlife. So, but it does kill the mosquito larvae. So these are good. This is the um, BTI. This is the same as this. Okay. All right. I think that I've covered everything that I wanted to cover here. Um, I do have baking soda that I have used in the past, but I have found that since I've been using the um, the rubbing alcohol and or the um, hydrogen peroxide, I haven't really had a need for this, although I do keep it on hand. I know there's a few um, very, very good YouTubers out there that swear by this, so I do keep it on hand just in case. Alright, and then as far as watering, um, I keep my distilled water separate from my tap water and I do mark the front of the tap water so that I don't get them mixed up. Um, and I try to fill those up a couple days in advance if I can so that they can um, get to room temperature. And also I'm hoping, and I don't know if this is working, but I'm hoping that the salt content from our water softener is either dissipating or falling to the bottom of the jug. Um, I don't know, maybe somebody would correct me on that because I'm, that's just a theory. I don't know if it's true or not, but I don't know what else to do about that problem um, other than using filtered water, which I do for the, I mean, the distilled water. Okay, so I, th I think that's it on my tools of the trade. I hope that I've given you some information that's helpful. And like I said, I, I do, um, when I end this video, I'll be putting this back together uh, the way that I need it for my daily operations here. And this just works very well to take around with me when I'm watering my plants from room to room. Uh, I have my spray bottle and my, you know, the tools that I might need. Cutting off dead, um, you know, dead leaves and, and things like that. Um, oh, and I sometimes I'll carry a cup with me or a baggie as well because one of the biggest detriments to bug infestation is decaying plant material. <coughs> it's really important to check that every couple of days at the least. I do it every time I water, almost daily. Check the top of your soil to make sure there's no dead leaves that are decaying there because so many types of um, plant insects feed off of that. So you want to get rid of that as soon as it happens. And I, I don't I don't always. I'm I'm not perfect at that either, but I try to be. And again, carrying this along sometimes is is um helpful. Okay, so I think that's about it for today and I appreciate the comments that I receive. I thank you so much for subscribing for those of you that have and uh, for those of you who have viewed my videos, thank you so much. And um, if you haven't subscribed, please do. And don't forget to hit that notification bell. That will let you know when I have a new one um, up and running. Okay? Um, and if you have any videos that you would like to see me do, that um, you have questions on or that you're just interested in, let me know that as well. Otherwise, I'm just going to carry on with my agenda and hope that you all are, are getting something out of it and appreciating um, what you are seeing and hearing. Other than that, I hope you all have a wonderful day. 
it is Monday, so we got a whole work week ahead of us, but for those of you that are working, I'm, I'm happy that you have a job, and uh, for those of you who aren't I, and, and want one, I, I pray that you get one, and for everybody else, I hope that you enjoy your week, and we will see you soon, or you'll see me soon, or you'll see my video soon. Alright, thank you so much. Bye now.